is um it comes from the um the idea of it comes from um Marie Genometta. Uh okay, so the original question that she sent me last night, um, she said, Why don't women care or value themselves enough to leak? Oh no, that's my question. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's my question. <laughs> That's my question. Oh, I, I, I felt so early today. I was like, I don't think that's what I'm reading right now. <laughs> okay. okay, read it. Okay, so her question was Are there still soft, compassionate, affectionate women versus thug misses? Does being that soft, compassionate, affectionate woman, is that being looked upon as doing too much when it's pertaining to guys? So I guess what she's saying is I have wrapped up by saying um, are black women emotionally fulfilling black men, um, which is a, a, a good topic to talk about. Um, because, But I would like to say just a, little, a sprinkle this in before I let y'all go. I want to say a disclaimer, black men. I think the reason why women, black women are so hardcore, a gangster, or thug misses, or rah, 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 is because Look at the positions that y'all leave us in. You know, um, be better black men, oh. and we'll be better black women. You know, oh. um, it's I mean, it's energies, it's vibes. It's now if you're talking about the black women that just coming off bat like what you gonna attitudes, then even if let's say even if she is coming off like that, you probably know she's coming from a hurt place. Like Keisha said earlier. That one when she spoke something and I felt it. She was talking when we talking about tattoos. If she's coming <laughs> off automatically of like with the attitude and being the gangsta boo and the the you know the ride or die whatever or aggressiveness, then clearly there's some tattoos there that you can't see. So take the time with these black women who you feel like are aggressive or not doing what they're supposed to do. Take the time with them and find out what's wrong with them. Take us, take her to a massage. Go get a massage. You know, all this, like put her in a relaxing state of mind and find out what's really wrong. What's really wrong? Find out if you want to deal with it. Because I'm, I'm real big on it's your life. You do not have to entertain the bullshit. You don't have to stay and sit in that. Find out what it is. Ask all the questions. Figure it out. And then if if it's too much for you, back off. Leave. All right. Who would like to go? So basically the question um, is, uh, yeah, okay. Black women, um, are they emotionally fulfilling black men? Okay. You, oh, you hold on, Keisha. Hold on, Keisha. Before you go, I just want to say, because I see some comments coming in, Ashley has already, numerous on numerous occasions, opened a conversation yeah. up for guys to join us because it is a conversation that we will want to have where we can actively have a guy's uh, input on. So she's said on numerous occasions guys if you want to come on or if you want to call in do so or if you want to drop your opinion do that so these are i I was gonna say i think this is jeremy's first yeah this is his first time yeah this yeah this is jeremy's first time on here but yeah jeremy so she's she's you know you can drop your your um responses in the comments and we'll read those um just to get a guy's perspective um, but yeah, they, of course, we're all female. So this is just how we feel about it. We definitely want to know um, your perspective. So if you want to drop your comments and we'll definitely read them out um, here. And but Jeremy, I'm, again, this is an open, it's, it's I know this is us, your so first this time. Is this is an open invitation. We will be recording again Sunday, this Sunday coming up, Sunday the 17th, same time, 8.30, hopefully to 10, 30, 10 o'clock, hopefully. But so if you would like to come on, inbox me like you can tag my name click my name inbox me and um i you could be the fifth picture up here we i want a black man up here <laughs> our men period well really black men because yeah that's me I, too that's what I like that would I be prefer, really good you know i, right. I want that i want y'all to be able to chime somebody in who's actually gonna listen somebody that's gonna listen all right you see how like when we talk we and then and then and then you know, don't I don't want to debate. Like I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have to get a restraining order, or press charges. You know, I don't want to have to do that. We just want great conversation, <laughs> good content. Let us see your point of view. Like change our minds. Like we're open minded. You know, we were like, well, we, we, we didn't know that. I didn't think that. But yeah. But go ahead, mm-hmm. Keisha. 
Okay, so Ashley, I don't know if you remember the video I did. What you said kind of inspired you to want to start. Oh yeah, about the good black. There are some good black men, and I just okay. Well, I don't want to necessarily just limit it to black men, but black men are a target. They they Mm -hmm. are the target. They even the target from the white women. To be honest with you, they are. Um, so the whole thing about it is that that video, uh, Court and Whitney, the video. What I I kind of tagged it, and it's on my page. I went live, and it said defending our real men, defending men, um, the good ones, and um, everything like that, because you do have some out there that were raised correctly. You have some that the daddy did do a good job. You have some that they know what to do, but they decide to do whatever else they want to do. Right. And then you do have those guys out there that have been hurt and don't know how to let the hurt go. So they detri- they decide to want to play to try to cover it up versus giving each female their own chance, like we like some of us do. Um, but a, a, a black know. woman, <laughs> a, a black woman can emotionally um well I think you said emotionally satisfy support so. fulfill a black man like like fulfill a black man yeah like okay. like will she if he's hurting will she be there for him while he's hurt like will she or, or, or is she the type of black woman where she's like suck it up nigga like you were supposed to be a man right. like so that know. what was in my video guys have men have been raised with society and mainly from women suck it up that's how men they have mainly been raised suck it up you a boy, you a man, men don't cry, men don't do this, men don't do that, not realizing what they go out and face every single day from their peers. So when they come home, they already got an issue, a problem in the world. They don't need to come home to a problem at home. At all. And you got a lot of them that do that. They'll do that problem. They don't say, hey, everything's okay. Well, I'm here if you want to talk to me. You know, you could come to me because see, guys have been processed to deal with stuff internally till we think they're hurting us to turn away when in our actuality they trying to process it to come back to us but they first need to know they first need to know can they even trust us with their feelings can they even trust us with what they got going on can they trust us not to throw it back in their face later when something comes up or when something happens so honestly and Michelle got to come back in this one for a moment. Honestly, a woman's not angles. I don't want to say job. I know how picky Courtney is about words. So, so, <laughs> so I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to say her job. But if if y'all can follow me for a moment, okay. When Adam was made, he was made from dust. When he made Eve, Courtney, get your he made head. he made Eve from bone. Am I not? Am I correct? If, for those it. that know the Adam and Eve story. Yeah, come on, Kista. Yeah, you with it now. You with it. Okay. So now think about this thing. She was made not just from any kind of bone. She was made from the rib. And the rib comes from your rib cage. And it comes from his rib cage. Mm-hmm. What is in that rib cage? His heart that he needs to live, that pumps your blood. The lungs that he needs to breathe. And a couple of other organs that he needs to survive. Absolutely. So being that that you come from the real cage and that is a protection, all four of us right now is somebody's missing rib. Every every woman is somebody's missing rib. And as that missing rib, we are supposed to protect them emotionally. They're supposed to protect us too. Now don't get my that crush, wrong. My social media crush. Don't don't right? get don't don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that a man is not supposed to emotionally protect you either. He is supposed to protect, provide, profess. He's supposed to do all that too. But when you look at it coming from Michelle way, we are supposed to help emotionally protect them. We are supposed to help them that way because we are the missing rib from that rib cage that protects. And what's wrong sometimes, not all, not all times, and I know everybody won't agree, but what's wrong some of the time is that female sometimes can't emotionally protect him or be that emotional fulfillment because they're now trying to put their rib into the wrong rib cage. Now, hold up now. 
Because I thought when you were saying that, I thought you was going to say she can't do what's needed for him because she's still, she's damaged, which a lot of black women are damaged, you know? So that's why I believe in therapy. Um, We enter in situations because you know how you have that honeymoon phase of where everything's all good, but you really need that. That's why questions and talking to each other is very important so you can figure out what you want to do. But um, if she's hurt, she's hurt, they damaged, then the relationship ain't going to work because they don't know how to like, balance it out and stuff but when you say she's putting her rib in somebody else's case what you mean like another man or what do you mean okay so <laughs> you have not necessarily another <laughs> man it can be the wrong man because honestly look look at it this way okay women do get damaged okay absolutely and absolutely. sometimes dam sometimes damaged men can't do what they need to do as a man a man and sometimes damaged women can't do what they need to do as a woman Right, but when right. you are fitting, okay, when you got a lock and a key, if it's the wrong key, you can't unlock oh, that lock. Uh, uh-uh. uh, don't start, don't start that lock and key mess, please don't, because I hate, I hate that with a passion. When people get on, well, that I lock don't, and key, I don't know the lock and key thing you're talking about, oh, but that's good because I need to hear it. This getting good. <laughs> now, well, this I don't, I don't good. know exactly what you mean it, as far it as it the might, lock and key. Might be a, yeah. Keith, I think he's talking about a different one, but when I automatically heard lock and key something just like <laughs> think, I think you thinking about what I thought of when she said yeah. okay, so, well then okay, go ahead, y'all. I don't I don't know too much as far as about the lock and key that you guys are talking about, but what I'm I only use the lock and key because like when you try to get into your house, your door, and you use the wrong key, it won't open your door. So you have a lot of uh people that hook up with the wrong person, now you're damaged, now you can't do what you're supposed to do, so now you're trying to put the rib into the wrong rib cage, and nobody can emotionally be there for nobody. That rib cage can't be secure, if like, if that makes sense, to get away from the Yeah, I get what you're saying now, and then that, go, that ties into what Whitney was saying about you need to date people, you need to see like who is for you and who's not for you. You know, um, that's why I don't believe in getting married young. Like, I don't, I, this is just my personal opinion. Disclaimer, you know, I just, I just feel like you need to grow. You need to, you need to learn how to, you need to learn how you, how you gonna automatically get married. Like you need to learn how to be a, a wife. You need the mom. Like it's just, it's a lot. You need to learn how to be a woman, you know, but um, I guess some people have the patience to like, you know, go step by step teaching you and everything, but. All right, who else would like to take this on? Are black um, women emotionally fulfilling think, black men? Um, I think they definitely are. Um, you know, with everything, you know, everybody's situation is different. Absolutely. Um, and I just think it just really depends on what you're exposed to and you know what's around you. Are you exposed to you know relationships where it's always struggle up or it's always you know take 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 and no giving or do you see more of you know healthier relationship or where where you know the the woman is there for her man emotionally um and where the man is doing whatever he needs to do in the relationship as well so I think it all really just depends on you know your situation who you're around because all of those things shape your perspective you know right everybody's perspective is going to be different based on what they've seen, what experiences they know that their family went through, what their parents went through. So it's all going to be different, but that doesn't negate, that doesn't say that my situation is superior to anybody else's. That's just saying that it's different. And so I think, you know, overall, I see that it's become a lot more conversation that a lot of guys are having saying that, you know, the women are not there to um, support them emotionally and I think that's kind of like a good and a bad thing because I feel like that's the opportunity for I'm not going to say black women that's the opportunity for black men to show that they want to be more emotional even though they probably wouldn't select those words but that's a great opportunity to show that you want to be more emotional that you want to be more vulnerable and that you want to open up more and that's also the time to not close that person out because, you know, even if you say, you know, I, I'm a closed off person, I don't want to, you know, show my emotions, that's shutting down. And, you, you know, it's hard for somebody to 
be there for you if you say, oh, I need you to be here for me emotionally. And they're like, okay, what's wrong? What's wrong? How can I help you? I don't know. Just just be here. It's hard for them to kind of frame how can I be here for you other than, you know, I'm just making sure. You can't even make sure that they're happy because they don't know how to cater to what, what's the issue. So that's a great opportunity for them to say, look, this is what I'm going through. Like, you know, it's been a hard time for me. I feel like I don't, I'm not satisfied. I'm not where I want to be in life. I want to do X, Y, Z. And then they can kind of, you know, motivate you and comfort you and try to help you get up. But if they don't know what's wrong or, you know, how you're feeling, it can't, I don't think they can be available to you because they don't know how to support you. So I think it's a great opportunity for men to, to use that as an opportunity to be more vulnerable um, and to realize that it, this not, isn't something that just happened, you know, just because of, you know, how how they may have been raised. Like I know somebody commented that men aren't supposed to cry and, you know, all of these things are layers as to why it may be harder for men to um, open up. But, you know, as you get older, you learn more things, you, you right. go through things, you know, some of those things that you've been taught, you know, you can't always go back to, okay, that's how I've been taught because right now we are grown adults. And although sure. those are ways that you, we, we have to start to break these generational curses. So we can't that's the topic say you that, you know, about. oh, that's how I've been raised and that's how, now those are our reasons why it's, but it's like, at this point, what are you going to do with that? If you right. know that you've been taught that, doing X, Y, Z makes you weak, but personally, you know that you need to be vulnerable and you need somebody to come for you, that's your opportunity to break those generational curses. Yeah, like that, that is, and it's really, when people think of a curse, they think of something really bad. But as I learned in therapy, generational curses are just patterns, like patterns of behaviors that keep getting passed down and passed down. So you, you know, your mom telling you don't, don't cry, that's weak you know, never show emotion, and then you grow up, and you just think, oh, you know, that's what I've been taught, even though I want to be vulnerable, you have your son, and the next thing you know, you're telling your son that, and then he grows right. up, and he's telling his son that, right. that's a generational curse, but in really a generational pattern, so you have to take responsibility to say, look, I don't, I don't want my relationship with my girl to be that way, I don't want to be closed off to her, I want her to know what's going on with me, and how I'm feeling, and how she can make me better, you know, that's how, that's, I think that's how the conversation should be, and you should be open. A, a guy should be open. And I think it just really just depends on who you're with. Um, I think somebody right. dropped a comment in here on um, the J guy saying that his his girl um, was there for him, even though she would, he thought that she would, you know, I guess like move on, you know, based on whatever it was. And, you know, relationships, you go through things. And I know some people's like, oh, that's not the same to me. That's not the same as struggle love. Helping somebody through a difficult uh, situation or working through things, that's not struggle love, you know, because everybody has their own issues and things that they come with, um, right. you know, but I feel like as long as you're, you're working, working through it, and it's not always a take, take, take from the person, like you're giving something, you're just trying to figure out, like, how do we, how do we make it work for us, or how do we move forward so we can, you know, be better together, then I think that is something that that's worth sticking out. You know, it, course, if it's okay. damaging you and it's toxic, then of course you want to remove yourself. But if it's something that, you know, I feel like every the person that you're in a relationship with is supposed to make you better. So it's supposed Absolutely. to be things that they're supposed to help you get through. You're not all the time going to just come, you know, ready made, you know, like there may be certain things that are like non-negotiables, but it's certain things that it's like, look, this is something I'm, you know, this is what I'm bringing to the table and it's not good. It might not be all glitz and glamour, but this is just something that, you know, I have an issue or something that I have and we can work through that. Then it's just like, okay, you know, everybody has that. Nobody just come and just everything you want and, you know, no issues. So I think that's just the things that you have to work with. And, and that's why it's important to know, like, what is it that you want and, and really having those conversations when you're dating people because you need to know those things. You, you know, do. you get somebody who you're just scratching the surface with and, you know, something happens and you realize they, they shut down when things happen. They don't know how to communicate or, you know, they have anger issues and it's like they don't know how to process those things. You know, that's when it starts becoming a problem. So that's why it's so important to really get to know the person that you're dating and really be invested in that because it's like once you're invested in it it's like you're putting your yourself on the line and your emotions and you know yes. how you're feeling you know you're just investing in the other person so it's you just gotta you know really know the person and really help them I feel like 
the person should be in your life to make you better. Like you shouldn't be stagnant and same. You shouldn't have to struggle alone. If you're with somebody, I know a lot of people think of it. I've seen it a lot. You know, if you, you know, are talking to a guy and you, you know, you struggling, you ain't got no money, whatever. And you talk to somebody, they're just like, oh, you need to stop talking to him because they're not helping you. I feel like it's the same thing when it comes to serious things. Like if you're talking to somebody seriously and you feel like you're alone, you know, I think that's still linked to a lot of, uh, that's still linked to, you know, some issues mentally as far as like maybe depression or abandonment, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't have to feel alone or feel like you have to go through the journey alone. If Especially you're with somebody, like your mate is supposed to help you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. You need those emotional. Sorry, y'all. That was a you, little you, No, no, that, that is amazing. The relationship is, you need those, <laughs> like, when you get paid, you get direct deposit. You, your emotions, your feelings, that love, it's a deposit. Like, women, we got a deposit. Men, you got a deposit. You got to make those deposits. You got to. And um, you need to find somebody who you are comfortable with. Like, not to get sexual or whatever, but you want to get, you want to know if a woman freaky, you want to know if a man freaky, like, find out if they're sane, like, they got, you know, whatever issues, and then figure it out. And don't just leave. Don't just give up on a person. Like what Jay was saying. Like he thought his girl was going to, like, that's another thing. But I I, I don't want to say we just leave because clearly we don't. You know, we put up with a lot of things, you know. But um, I think everybody needs to take the opportunity. Like if you know you was raised a certain way that you look back on and be like, damn, that was fucked up. You know, like I don't, me, per something personal, like, when I have children, because I don't have any right now, I don't feel like I'm going to whoop my kids. Or as Black people would say, beat their ass. I don't think I'm going to do that. You know, I'm going to go the therapy route, which is time out, talk to them, sit them down, let them know like, hey, you know that was wrong. This is why it was wrong. I love you. Don't do it again. Because that stuff is like traumatizing. You know, it ain't abuse like how, you know, they want to say, but I just feel like everybody should start communicating, express yourself. I know men, they do, they were told, don't be crying, suck it up. You a man, you a boy, you know, but you grown now, you know, and if you want that relationship to work, you want her to be there for you, or, you know, you gotta, it's everybody gotta do better. Hit the restart button. It's fine. Yeah. It just hit the restart button at any point in your life it is okay to start over emotionally you know it, it is okay you know but Courtney yeah, how that you was, that's very important to say Ashley oh. I, I ain't mean I ain't mean to cut you off oh, no, Ashley, go ahead. But that's very important when you just said you know hit the restart button because I think it's important for I'm going back to just as us as a community I think it's important for black men and black women to really understand each other because you know the odds are stacked against both of us you know we we yeah, both we go out into the world other. and face a lot of different things oh, yeah. yeah definitely being there for each other because you know I know it's easier to say like being a woman I can sit here and list all the things how it is being a woman and then add on top of that another layer of being a black woman you know and the same thing with the black men there's things that you go out into the world and you have to face and you know Nobody will understand that because you're a black man and you know how it feels going out every day and dealing with whatever the situation is. But I think it's very important for black men and black women to really come together and understand each other and support each other. It shouldn't be, you know, oh, I feel like I have it hard as a black woman or I have it hard yeah, as that, a black that man. Like they're we, competing against one another. Like yeah, we, both, we both struggling, my brother. We both exactly. struggling. You got shit, I yeah. got shit. Let's come together and get this shit done <laughs> and take care of like, right. we should not. Yes. I hate, I hate those debates. Like I am conversing with multiple men. Mm -hmm. Not sleeping, but conversing. And I meet all different type of caliber of men, you know? Uh, very well educated and then some who's like fuck fuck high school I ain't going you know so I've, I've met I've talked to them all but one of the things that we kind of like butt heads on which I don't feel like we should you know especially with me because I'm an advocate y'all know I'm an advocate of staying within my race like I want to I want a black man I want my cute chubby brown babies you know so don't make it hard for me <laughs> like I'm an adult, but don't make it hard for me to be like, you know what? Y'all ain't worth it. I'm out of here. You know, I'm about to go over here with Brad, you know, but yeah, so somebody, I'm, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you can go ahead. No, I was going to say, because 
somebody had made a comment, um, had dropped a comment and they were like, um, I don't know what to say word for word, but basically they were saying that, you know, it's harder for black men because nine times out of 10, us as black women, we had our mom in our lives. So, you know, it's harder for them because they were missing a father. And I, pers from personal experience, I like to say, I don't necessarily think you, ha you can say it's harder because there are so many aspects of uh, the absence of a father from a daughter's life that I feel like kind of catapults and leads to a lot of things in her adult life. And the same thing, I'm sure it is an absent father. You don't know how to navigate things like understanding women and how to be there for somebody. You know, there's certain, like I tell people all the time, you know, a person can't be, be mom and dad. As much as people try to, you can't be mom and dad. There's just certain things that as a, a woman, or as a man you need both you need both like there's no being the man and the woman for for your child and so I just think that you know it's you, you really can't say it's harder because again you all you're only speaking from a perspective as a man who may or may not have had his father in his life and I'm speaking for a perspective that father was present but not present in a way that was needed to be done. So there are, are things that both sides are having to deal with. So you can't really say harder because you don't really necessarily know what the absence of the other person's father or mom may have created for them. So that's my thing. Like it's issues that we just have to understand about each other and, mm -hmm. you know, work to like the same way you break in generational, generational curses. That's the same way we have to do a lot with um, these stigmas or, or stereotypes that we yeah. have about men, about women, black women, black men, like we have to break those things because we can never come together in unity and really have that black love. And I support you and you support me. Right. I'm, right. I'm all for you and you all for me. If you're constantly, if we're constantly going back and against each other, it shouldn't be that way. Like we should be together, um, unified and on one united front. We can't move forward if we're always trying to go against each other. That's not black love. Black love is supporting each other. Black love is loving on each other and always being there for each other. You know, letting us know when we're right or wrong, but at the end of the day, you know that that person has your back. That's that's true black love. Right. And then it's speaking of that, like, right, like I, I don't know why black people we 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 group, we gather together despite the opposition or whatever who we beefing with when it's like a Caucasian person that done us wrong or something hashtag black lives matter you know um but when you when we hurting each other we just be like well you know you just excuse it you be like well you know they did such and such well no like that shit ain't cool it's not cool so i would like to start using hashtag black love like correctly like let it be some real shit you know like come together yeah not just for a relationship, but like when something is wrong, like, and that's another thing I've been telling these guys that I've been conversing with. I'm like, they love to say, it ain't me. I ain't like that. I ain't this. I ain't that. That's that other nigga. Da, 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 da. You know, well, talk to your homeboys. Talk to your homeboys, because I damn sure talk to my girls, hint how this stuff be coming about, you know. Talk to your homeboys. Talk to your brothers. Talk to your cousins. And no, you may not have a father there but you there is a father figure like don't like all my life growing up I've always seen mentors like uh Mary County got this Mary County got that like there's men have been trying for forever and I'm 35 men have been trying for yeah. forever to have like groups even if it's like somebody at your church or it might be somebody closer your uncle you know like that will who, who would mm -hmm. be my father figure because my right personally I'm one of the black women which just ain't no sad story or nothing but I'm a black woman that did not have her father in her life my mom was there but and then her therapy mm. like my father was my first fuck nigga like that's my first guy that I was like ain't shit your daddy which yeah. is horrible that is horrible so if the person who helped create you he wasn't there and you thinking in your head he ain't shit then it really is that's some that's some mental health shit but I'm, I'm okay like I ain't you know I ain't crazy I ain't hashtag all men ain't shit just hashtag some men ain't shit you know just the <laughs> ones that I know you know I'm not gonna say all of them you know but but I I'm am. an adult I, right well, you know. I'm an adult too and I'm saying all of them in your right. own special way 
Right, 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 right. So <laughs> basically, we have we're adults now. We have our own mind, our own minds. We live our own paths. It's up to you to determine what you yeah. want, your happiness. You can't go all your life because I know like comedians like to say, "Oh, if you you twenty five and you still saying all men ain't shit, maybe it's your ain't shit pussy, or maybe it's you, nigga." Oh, like, God. like I hate right. when they do stuff like that. Like, so the point of this, what I'm trying to say is, if you meet a damaged woman, a damaged black woman, because that's the top that black women, because men like to say, "Why y'all so hard? Why y'all so gangster? Why y'all so this? Why y'all y'all got issues too?" Sit down together and just talk, communicate and say, love, I need this from you. I need you to be more gentle. I need you to be more soft. I need you to be more loving, more affectionate. Touch me more. Tell me you love me. Like, ain't nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with communicating. If you can, she ain't no damn mind reader. And I know that it's like, oh, well, she she know when I'm cheating. And also ask. And also, I want to add because I got bad memory, so if I don't sit and I okay. forget it. And also, too, it's like I said, it's very good for you know to communicate those things. Like this is what I want and X, yeah. Y, Z, and that's that's fine. And also, don't don't forget that if you do express that to somebody and they and they tell that I can't give you that right now, or I'm I'm not available for that, or this is too much, or I can't handle it. I feel like you should be upset with that person if they're being honest with you because if you feel like, oh, well, you need to be here and you need to do X, Y, Z and you keep going and it doesn't happen, I don't feel like that that's, is that person's fault, especially if they're, they've already been up front with you and just say like, look, you know, that may be more than I can bite off right now or, you know, for whatever reason, they may not be able to handle it. Like, that's why you need to, I feel like you should find somebody with the qualities that you want or that, you know, that's able to take on what you're bringing to the table. You know, not everybody is fit for that. So you really have to, you know, understand people. And if they tell you that, hey, look, this might be something more than I bargained for, or I'm not ready for this right now. That's okay. It's not, it's, it's nothing bad for a person to say, this is not what I want. Like, if that's not what you want, you have to move on. There's no reason for you to stay. And then, you know, the other person wonder, oh, why are they not being there for me? Or, you know, why they're not doing X, Y, Z? That's why the communication is important, important because if, if you're being upfront with that person and letting them know what, what you can do or, you know, what's going to be difficult or whatever the situation it is, it's okay if somebody chooses to walk away. And that's not to say that you should bash them for walking away or bash them because they didn't stay. Because if it's something that they can't give you, at that moment, then, you know, that's, that's really helping you. They're, they're helping you because they're saving you from going down a road of being hurt, whatever the case may be. And one of my Facebook friends, he always goes on like Facebook lives and talks about these things. But it's just like, if a person is telling you that they're unavailable and move on, like, just accept that, you know, everybody is not going to give you what you want. So instead of, you know, having them saying you like, oh, this poor, this person, you know, it's toxic or this person did X, Y, Z. It's like, if, I, if I'm telling you these things and you choose to still stay, then I don't feel like that other person is at fault. And I know like a lot of times, like one time, um, who was it? Diddy and Cassie. I don't know if y'all have followed the story, but you know, oh, Diddy yeah. Yeah. was dating 10 years, girl, yeah, Cassie 10 years. For, and then within yeah, one year. For she, long. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And then it was just like on to the next. And you know, a lot of people were just saying like, oh, Diddy wasted her time. And you know, he wasn't really serious. And you know, I don't know people's situation, but in my head, if the situation went like this, if Diddy and Cassie were together and Diddy told Cassie, look, I know I'm not trying to get married. I'm not to have no more kids. I'm just, you know, vibing right now. And Cassie said, okay, that's fine. I choose to stay. Cassie can't then get mad at Diddy because he's not giving her what she wants when he right. already told you this is what it is. Absolutely. Same thing with the relationship. You know, the other guy that was written on Twitter, I mean, on Facebook, he was just saying that if somebody is telling you, I don't want a relationship, and it's just going to be what it is. We just going to, you know, be friends with benefits or whatever the case may be. And occasionally they may take you out or, you know, go to the movies and stuff. And I know how we are working out because I think you mentioned one time, like, in my head, okay, we ain't conversing. Like, we talking now because we going on dates right. and we going out in different places. But it's like, if they already told you, like, 
this ain't a relationship. We just hanging out. Like you then can't put that on the and just be like, oh, well, I need to be your girlfriend or I need to be this when they are clearly communicating with you and telling you like, that's not what they want. So you really have to make sure you're not getting in your own way and causing your own hurt and, and own disappointment. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say two things and then we can wrap it up. Uh, I would like to address two things. Uh, Jay. Okay. Um, I know you didn't like that. I know that's coming from a hurt place. However, you can tell your uncle that I'm in a better state of mind and I don't want to talk to him verbally. The first, the first communication need to be, he can, I will read a letter from him. So he can write me a letter or two and explain why he wasn't there. I will, I will accept that. And then depending on how the letter go, then we can communicate. We can talk over the phone. But other than that, talk to your uncle because you are a man now, you know. So talk to your uncle and, and ask him, do 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 to him what you just did to me. Ask him, why, why wasn't you there for her? Like, because he bragged about me. I hear that he proud of me, you know, but he had nothing to do with this. Or did he? Or did he have some kids? Or did the fact that he wasn't here gave me the hustle and the drive and the ambition to be like, you know, and then the second thing, um, uh, Ken, he said, no man wants a to-do list. I hate that. I hate that. I don't understand. You don't, you have no, y'all have no problem when the white man tell you, you can't do this, 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 at a job or employment for you to get money, for you to survive and pay your bills. We're talking about your love life here. We're talking about what he said, your rib, the person who, like, who you supposed to end up being with. If y'all sit down, like, why is that an issue a to-do list and she's saying i want i need this from you i need that from you can you do this but at the end of the day if you're the type of man where you're like i don't want to hear all that i don't want that i ain't fooling with that guess what you can leave you can bow out and you can leave so don't just don't waste her time or don't fuck with her don't mentally fuck her and be like oh, okay i can do that but you know really and truly you're not you're you won't so just when she says that, that to-do list that you're talking about, just say, listen, I ain't here for all of that. Like, what are we going to do? <laughs> and then just leave. It's that simple. So then she can't find her person, her cage, that she in her locker key or whatever it is, that she can it properly fit. Who The man who is willing to do the work, the man who's willing to uh, do what he need to do to um, satisfy her, to fulfill her, and then she can be the same for him. But Courtney... Um, and if you got oh. anything to say, go ahead, Courtney. And then we can wrap this up. For time's sake, I'm just going to say my answer is um, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> it ain't a yes or no question. I mean, yeah. Yes, it is. The question was... So, wait, so, so you feel like women are not fulfilling? Wait. No, I'm saying, I think... I mean, because if I go into, I'm just going to be reiterating what you guys have already said. Okay. And for time, that's what I'm saying. For time's sake, it's just, I'm just going to say, I do think women can fulfill um, Black men uh, emotionally. However, you can't do that unless someone's willing for you to 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 open up for you. Can't, so you can do that. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I do think that women can do that. But at the same time, you can't emotionally fulfill somebody who's not open enough for you to do that. If that makes sense, if it doesn't make sense. It makes sense. perfect sense. So basically when Kim was like, I'm not doing that to-do list, he's not going to be there. <laughs> so I mean, right. If, you don't, if I'm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Well, all right. Well, all right then. Uh, this is great. This is awesome. This is amazing. Hopefully Whitney, I don't want to kidnap you, but I would like to see you back next Sunday. You know, and I would like if, to be back. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, <laughs> well, um, you know how this goes. Thanks you guys for watching. Um, uh, this is supposed to be like an hour and 30 minutes, but I'm, I'm contemplating on possibly doing like an after show. So letting it be for like the hour, hour 30. And then after that, whoever can not stay on, then you just come on with me and we can talk like, and, but after show y'all calling in, like you don't have to show your face, but you will be calling in. So download zoom on your phone. You don't have to show your face like this right here. Um, just post up a picture, a cute picture, you know? And then we can just hear your voice. Like, I can talk to you back and forth. And then, like, if you're watching the first show, then you can write down your questions or something that we said that you're like, I want to address, da 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 And then you can call in. So there will be, like, an after show. Because, like, right now, all y'all are doing is just typing in. But 
for those of you who like to actually um talk, it, it, I'm gonna start doing an after show. So that'll probably be Sunday. So the after show will probably start at like 10 o'clock. So thank y'all for watching. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all go like the I've Noticed podcast Facebook page. Thank y'all. I will see y'all next. Well, this Sunday, the 17th. Bye, y'all. Thank y'all. Bye.